Welcome Coaster Spotters back to Mount Van Hovenberg, site of the 1932 and 1980 oh, Winter Olympics Games. I was actually here six days ago, so let's talk about that on the other channel, which the video won't be out probably for a while because the other channel hasn't launched yet, but uh, the Venture Spot, it's coming soon. I uh, showed up last Tuesday. Their hours said that the mountain coaster was going to be open and it wasn't. They had changed their hours, but they hadn't had the uh, chance to change their hours on the website or update anybody on Facebook and all that stuff. So I talked to the director and said my situation and, you know, like, it's kind of, kind of crummy. So, Since you drove seven hours. Yeah, I mean, I was up here to do other stuff anyways, but like, I drove significantly out of the way to come here t on that day. And uh, she, uh, I basically said basically like, if I come back, you take care of, take care of me, you know, to ride the coaster and, you know, make good on things. Uh, you said I don't try to do that, but kind of a crappy situation, and I think they did the right thing. And they uh, invited you out, too, because you were uh, not on the trip earlier on. You met me in Boston, and we're going to ride. Uh, it is North America's longest roller coaster, 7,600 feet long, uh, making it, uh, I believe, the... 15th or 16th longest roller coaster in the world, something like that. But how long is the lift hill? Yeah, I know, I know, lift hill's long. How long is, I want to know from top to bottom. Yeah, and I don't think on roller coaster database, sometimes they have the downhill and okay. uphill. Uh, this one does not. Oh. But regardless, it's a long roller coaster. Uh, and it is $55 a go. Uh, I, I, of course, you can go to Epcot and spend like, you know, close to $200 on a day ticket to Epcot, but you've got the rest of the day. You don't have a, you know, 10, 12 minute ride. Uh, I know there's some special things about this. There's an aeration. It's like built right on top of the original 1932 bobsled run. So lots of cool things about it that I understand why they priced it at such a premium price. Just because we're getting it for free, it doesn't mean I will not be very objective about things and let you know. If you're a credit person like me who needs to ride all of them, I was gonna do it anyways. It took me a few years to finally say, okay, I'll spend the $55. And then obviously when I got here and it hours. was closed, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Finally. And you were pretty calm when you texted me that day though. Yeah, I actually like, I even left the building and then I realized I need to go to the bathroom. So I went back into the building and then as I was going to the bathroom, I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. So I just yeah. went up to the person taking tickets and was like, can I talk to your manager? Because you got to hear that. this yeah. is a kind of a... Kind of a bad situation, but again, very nice for them to do it. But we're, I'm just so excited. Are I'm you excited? Good. Yeah. yeah. I never thought I would do this, so I'm not. I wasn't going to spend if I got us to do this. Right. So, yeah, it looks so pretty, though. Look at this. So, we're all set. You ready to go? Looking at the things here. I get shocked by merchandise. It's all like survival stuff. All right. This opened, I believe, in 2020. And this is the ADG built one, not a Wiegelin. So this is American built. Typically they're known to be a little bit more rough, but wilder. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, definitely excited to try it out for sure. It seems like the different people did a more spacing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we went, with being 7,600 feet long, you want to see lots of spacing for sure. So yeah, that, that's plenty of spacing, I think. Depends on your phone, but yeah. So, and I like the, I can always see the cars kind of look like bobsled cars, and, oh, I'm very excited. You're also excited for this one, not just like, oh, it's not Yeah, no, this is not just another mountain coaster, like, not just because it was $55 and all that stuff, or it would have been $55, um, yeah. That's why you were super dis disappointed, even. It wasn't just another mountain coaster. No, it was, it's been a big deal for me to finally yeah. come up to this one. It's, it, you don't know on Coaster Count, the app, you can do near sonnet so i can see the, the credits that are like staring me at the face and uh one of them we've done tried to get and didn't get to knock that one off which one well two of them now at this which point one? you have the credit at, oh, at yeah. casino and then the zoo in west virginia well i have my playland legoland so yeah well we both have legoland who knows when we get there it's just so expensive oh my god if i got a germany car like that would be just like That's and you could hear the narration going That's so cool. They look like little bobsled cars. 
So you have a little thing at the front of them instead of just being flat faced. So this one here, the one you see here, this is the original bobsled run. One of the earliest bobsled runs ever built. Neat. Yeah. yeah, I think you'll learn a lot. I think on the sled they tell you a lot of. Okay. It's like a, it's kind of a historical tour as well. They wanted to make it a whole experience. So, all right, I think there's only one thing for you to do and hop on. All right, there Ariel goes. Take a look down So this is so cool. All the all the piping here to freeze the course and all the insulation that's on the backside. You never really see this when you're watching it on the uh, on the TV. And uh, yeah, Ariel is going on her run right now. We've got a great shot of her coming down. And as you can see, it's like literally built over portions of the old uh, bobsled, which is so cool. I find it interesting how simple the foundations here, though, are. How it's just railroad ties, basically, stacked across it. Oh boy. You will soon be entering the downhill track. Push the brake levers forward now and keep them forward until you're past the intended building. Wow. All right, this, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Woo. now get ready for your ride down this historic track. You'll be going over the top of the same track used for both the 1932 and 1980 Winter Olympic Games. Attention. Whee. Down the long straightaway above Curve 1. Taking the curve. Approaching Curve 2. Taking Curve 2 through on the way to Cliffside. Approaching Cliffside. Taking Cliffside. Cliffside is a corner combination of to Cliffside and on the way to Curve 6. Approaching Curve 6. Taking the curve through on the long straightaway above Curve 7. This is where the sledge really started to accelerate. Approaching seven, taking the curve through seven. Now below us is the straightaway to curve eight. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Oh. Curve, curve eight, on the way to Big Shady. No brakes, no brakes, no brakes. Oh god! No brakes! No brakes! And on the long straightaway above the Here we go, here we go, here we go. Alright, here we go. Triple down. One, two, three. Oh. Yeah. Here we go. Double down. Three, three, no, triple down. Here we go. Woo! Through the S. On the way to curve 12. Oh yeah. Woo. Taking the curve. Through 12 and on the way to the world famous zigzag curve. Zigging. Sagging. Yeah. What a change of direction at 75 mile an hour plus. Huge crowds used to be in the zigzag area, and for good reason. Through zigzag, and on the way to curve 15. Taking the curve 15, on the long straightaway above the finish curve. And now we're going to enter a 360 degree curve we call a Chrysler. Only two Olympic trucks ever had one of these. Now you're approaching Woo. the finish curve. Taking the curve through and down. Taking a bobsled ride is called the champagne of thrills. So first of all, 
We had both had to ride twice. <laughs> so they were very nice about that. They're like, yeah, you got stopped, no problem. I know why people, we'll talk about it. I know why people got freaked out. I know why my person got freaked out. Because why? The, okay, so there's, what do you, so. Okay, okay I went first. <laughs> so we're taking a hike up, by the way. There's no historical tour today, but apparently you can just kind of walk around and check things out. And I just, you know, I've never been by a bobsled before. Dale Mountain used to have a lame one but they removed it years and years ago. Uh, so I just, it's a bobsled. It looks so cool. Yeah, it does. Um, I'm only seeing the POV a few years ago of it. But let's look back, do I really want to do this? Yeah. So it was, I don't think in my past, it was okay. You know why they this did that though? It's, it's, it feels like a historical tour too. Oh, yeah, that part because when they're talking yeah. about, the narrator's talking about things, they're not talking about the coaster ride you're taking. Yeah. They're talking about all the curves of yeah, the original I mean, bobsled yeah. ride. So I can't complain about that, it's historical. Yeah. But, uh, so it's not one of the best? Yeah, the first half, it's more like a historical yeah. tour. And then you get into the good stuff. Yeah. And, and then I got stopped, slowed down on here, a little bit before that. I mean, so I didn't get to do the helix. The one helix aren't fast. I, I showed you, I showed you guys the full POV from the top to the bottom without stopping. I'll show you now where I got stopped, and I know why people stop where they stop. They get to that one where it drops down and then does a curve really quickly, yeah. and they freak out. But still, they give me two minutes apart. Yeah, I know. It's I. Did they give I'm you never, up for the second time? I don't think anybody had gone by the time I got down, so they yeah. were just kicking around, like, okay. waiting for people. And you got stopped just at the end for yeah, your second ride. Like, like fun part but like... you know where the photo was, right? Yeah, I saw it now. That's where yeah. I got stopped the first time. That was bad. Right before they had, there was two triple downs. Yeah. Those were fun. Yeah, that was fun. Those were fun. Those were fun. It but doesn't I... feel 76, though, does it? No, 76 it's feet going feet up, long? but I feel, I kind of like, um... More. Well, here's the thing about Gunstock the one. Mountain more than this one. Okay. Yeah. So this is the section that's really good. I'd say. Um, I, it's I really cool how it does go over, and right beside the original historical course. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, this is where the the tour would have been cool. Mm -hmm. I'm not, and I think I'm gonna research it before we finish this video, just so we know what we're talking about. They said this was 1990, I think, or 92, or something like okay. that. Yeah. Or the start building. I don't know when this exact course was built because it feels like they said that this course was used for the 80s and the 32s. I gotta say though, for on... <laughs> That's funny with the two of them on it. Yeah. I gotta say, for on right audio, like sometimes you get on right audio and as soon as you lift the lift hill, you hear nothing. Yeah. This was actually really good. Wait. Granted, you're never really going more than what? 30, slow. 40 miles per hour? Yeah. I felt like the slowest I did with the other two I did. So here's time. the difference between the, the one, one that I did in Germany that was 8,484 feet long or whatever it was. It was that, that was all downhill because it had, it had no lift hill, right? Yeah, the lift hill was pretty long. Right, so the one I did in Germany, it was nothing but downhill because it actually used a separate lift system to get the sleds up that wasn't on track. So the, the, the listed length was all downhill. So we gotta talk about the $55 uh, giant question in there. Um, Is it worth it? No. Uh, here's how it's worth it. But we knew that. Here's how I think it's actually kind of worth it. Okay. Is if you have your child with you, that's only $65 for you both to ride it. So that makes it down to 33 which does not make it the most expensive Alpine coaster in the world or in the United States. More stuff on people. I feel like he works here. <laughs> I mean, you can even hear the audio. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, and I think we're okay where we're standing. It's just like I, I'd love to be on this historical curve and like, what is this from? What was yeah. this a remain of? Like, was it a bathroom or was it like a checkpoint like Check. box? Like where they did timing? I don't know. So it's really cool they offered. Obviously, it sucks that it's not going today. It's amazing though the technology between you know like this and then then you, you get to the current course and it's got all those insulated it's all insulated with different chemicals and you know you know, all that stuff that's it's pretty cool it's yeah it's really cool how you can uh 
how it interacts with it. It's definitely, I go, I get what they're going with. No, it's not worth it. It's definitely not, unfortunately. Well, when you ate it. And your mouth is closest because you've been on 45. In the mid, it's not yeah. it's not terrible. It has some moments like right here is really awesome with the, the the triple down, and there's two of those triple downs. But if you don't have the money, don't spend it. I guess spend it on something else. I but think we'll to I think if you're a tourist, honestly, I think you're a tourist and you kind of want to experience something historical and all yeah. that stuff, and you really like the historical element, that makes it really cool. The audio does add to it. Yeah. It really is. So I'm pretty sure he's. Uh, all out and that's how fast you're going in some of those sections there's a really good moment i'll show you right now with the pov where it is but uh but if you have a budget and you only have enough money for three mountain coasters up here i don't and that's like all you care about i haven't done it but probably Adidas. well maybe some, it, well, you're more in the new york area if you're coming yeah, up from new york you could hit yeah jiminy peak you can hit greek yeah. peak and you can hit Berkshire East, which are all kind of straddling the New York, uh, New York, uh, Massachusetts border. Isn't that Massachusetts? Yeah, it's close today. Uh, I checked. Don't worry. I tried to get and use many mountain coasters as possible, and fortunately, this is the only one that was open, which worked out really well for us. So. You Me too. I wanted to ride it again. That's the only mountain coaster I want, and the one in Germany again. I'll do that one again in a second. And uh, so. Yeah, I, I think it's worth it. We gotta just wrap this yeah, up. I think like, that all it's worth it for the historical aspect for it. If you're here as a mountain coaster enthusiast and you can leave it, take it or leave it for some of them, and you're picky about yeah. it and you don't care about every single one. Yeah. I can't recommend it. Uh, it's not we the worst really, one though. Like we normally don't rec not recommend things. We normally tell people to do things. It's just right? so expensive. Yeah. Maybe but, for thirty five. Yeah, I mean, I would rather save my $55 yeah. and put it towards the $125 real bobsled experience, yeah. honestly. I don't know, during the summer it's 125 I don't know what it is during the winter, so. But I love walking and seeing just the, it's just so amazing how simple the original bobsled run was. It's just, it's just poured concrete. I think it's funny how they have bobsleds on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can see one all the way up there. It seems like this was all built in 2000 or so, and uh, everything you saw on the Alpine Coaster run, that, that was all a combination of the 32 and 80 course, and when they built the 80 course, they did have upgraded technologies with, you know, refrigeration, insulation, and all that stuff. But then, oh, by 2000, you got 20 years more of technology, right? Yeah. Like, way more efficient. Like, when they built the 32 one, they relied mostly on it being cold enough for yeah. ice to form on and, you know, spraying water onto it, I think. It was difficult to maintain. That's why you have so much insulation and pipes and everything like that. It makes it way hard, way... You, you know, it looks like your pipes don't freeze. Well, duh, it's but... It's not like they can have, like, a sprinkle out and... Well, yeah, you don't use water for refrigeration. You use refrigeration-type chemicals. Yeah, but the pipe could freeze mm -hmm. like, 1933 or whatever it was. Yeah. So, I think the only way to really get a better idea of what this is like is to do it one day. But they guess? I don't know. For me, not you. <laughs> well, it is... It does run in February with ice, so, uh birthday gift for me i think because your birthday is in july well you you'll be on wheels you have a big birthday coming up oh boy <laughs> don't talk about it all right uh we'll head down a little bit more and show you the viewing area they officially have and then uh wrap it up i know this has kind of been all over the place if you came here at the coaster cool if you came here to hear more about the bobsled cool but I don't know. It's just nice to get out. Kind of, this kind of combines both of my passions: hiking and roller coastering, and all that stuff. That's what I've always loved about mountain coasters, actually. Mm -hmm. Nature and roller coasters. They, they... Yeah. Well, that's Boulder Bass and Voyage. Oh my God. All right, let's go off to the finish area and check this out. We're walking underneath a bobsled area, a real bobsled course, not a roller coaster. Not one that doesn't operate in Pennsylvania ever. A real bobsled course. So neat. Wow. You're not as impressed. 
I know, me too. If it was open, I might pull it out the credit card today. $250 for a 60 second ride. Oh, I get what happens. So Ariel, this is how it works. Okay, okay. duh. You come around, right? Yeah. Come back down. So you don't need to rely completely on brakes. It finishes uphill. Sense. Yeah. And I think the finish line actually is probably down there somewhere. And this is, you just keep going up and you get off over here. So I didn't realize that this is one of the last curves and you're actually going, uh, I believe, uphill this way or whichever way you end going uphill and loop around, which is really different. I, I didn't realize that part of the course ends, I guess, uphill. Well, there's a timing gate right there you can see, just kind of like little water slides use. That's so cool. And then look, here's a modern-ish bobsled. I mean, kind of simple. There's not much to them. Just steel and some skates. Yeah. And like two ropes to do the steering. I think there are more seats to them than this. I don't even know. They're really simple. Dang. All right. Cool. Just to summarize, it's cool for the, the historical thing. If you're coming here for a good alpine coaster, not so good for $55. If you love Olympic history and bobsledding and all that stuff, the whole package, I think it's really interesting and maybe worth the $55, especially if you have a child with you. So then you're like per rider cost goes down. I think it's kind of worth it. But if it's uh, just you trying to get a coaster credit and you don't care about every coaster credit, definitely not worth it. But um, yeah, regardless, nice area to be with. This has been Alex. And Julia. Yeah. For the Custer Spot, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you, I don't know, somewhere soon, somewhere. Maryland. Maryland. We're going to Ocean City finally, because someone's been bugging me for years.